assassin agent who traveled to New York City to kill the president. This agent is KA-12. The KA program is a myth. Scan says he's truthful. This guy's selling smoke. Wrap it up, Bev. Don't you want to know the name? You're good. Many Australian directors get to work with actors who go on to become huge international stars. Sometimes it's here in Australia, and sometimes it's in Hollywood. In your case, you got to work with Angelina back in the early days of her career, back in the 90s. So how did the relationship change when you encountered her again? She was the same fearless performer uh, in, in, in 2009 as she was back in 1999. Her fearlessness then came from perhaps inexperience, um, not knowing any better. And now her fearlessness came from extreme experience. The power dynamic was different um, in as much as 10 years ago, I was clearly her teacher. Um, and when she came back, I was humble enough to, I think, to, uh, uh, to have to admit that she was now had a lot to teach me, particularly in the area of action films. How have you changed as a director from the last Hollywood film you made to this one? What, what did you bring to the equation that was different from your previous experience? From the last Hollywood film to this one, well, uh, two things happened uh, uh, in between to the action genre, and they were Paul Greengrass and Martin Campbell. The Bourne films introduced us to Greengrass's kinetic uh, camera movement, uh, uh, sometimes called shaky cam, and his kinetic energy, which is based on a completely different aesthetic than we were traditionally used to in action movies. The other difference was uh, Martin Campbell, who in reinventing Bond, gave Bond a heart and emotionality. Films everywhere, they're just getting more expensive. It's, it's independent films here, independent films around the world, Hollywood films. Do you think there, there's going to be a limit when the film industry around the world is going to say, we need to contain how big are... Yeah, we've already, we've already reached that limit, you know, um, at all levels of production all around the world. The expansion is over. Um, the, the studios and independent producers are all fighting to keep the costs within limitations. We're doing this at a time when we're standing on the precipice of a cliff and down below is a rocky death and it's called internet piracy. Can a director with your career, with your background, influence the studio? or influence where the film is going to be shot. For example, many Australian directors try to bring post-production work or the shoot to Australia. Is that something that you're interested in doing or can you do it? Do you have that? Yeah, problem? yeah, you can, you can do it. Um, it so happened that we, uh, this film was set in New York City, so yeah, it was difficult. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't a very good idea to, br to, to bring it back to Australia. It's great to, to do part of your films wherever they're shot back here in Australia, as I did with The Catch a Fire, which was, you know, a UK, um, U.S. production that we shot in South Africa but did all the post he here. Besides, you're also dealing with new incentives in places like New York, which is becoming even more film-friendly, offering more incentives. N New York State had brought in a 40% rebate, um, which is enormous and irresistible. The unlucky part of it was that uh, we couldn't find one place in the whole of New York State where we could set up a studio to, to film in um, because there was so much film activity in New York State uh, due, due to that 40% uh, rebate. You think everyone is who they say they are?